Hi everybody, welcome back to my study. Uh, and for those that are interested in this sort of thing, this thing uh, today is gonna be the unboxing uh, arrival, my first encounter with a Chris Reeve Menandi. Um, uh, just before I start, I will say, I'm probably gonna tack onto the end of this video um, an un enveloping of um, some Fox Hanks that I ordered. Um, Fox Hanks is the uh, couple um, who have their own company making these uh, great handkerchiefs and they did the uh, Chris Reeve um, handkerchief um, uh, which was in so much high demand uh, around Christmas 2019 and uh, about around the uh, USN uh, show um, gathering. So <clears throat> um, I ordered a, a couple and um, they put out a great product. So for those that are interested, stick around at the end of this video and I'll tack on uh, uh, that. Um, but the main point of this is the uh, arrival of, uh, and I, I was, I, I, now that I post these on YouTube instead of just on Facebook, I was going to hint at what I was unboxing um, with this mat, but obviously you can read the title of the video so you know what this is going to be. Um, but um, this is my first uh, Manandi or Manandi uh, or Amnamdi. Uh, I've heard it pronounced many different ways. Um, it's the Zulu word for very nice or pretty or beautiful, depending on whose translation um, you listen to. Um, but uh, as I've said in several of my videos, uh, I don't have a knife store in my uh, city, uh, well, well, one that carries Chris Reeve knives. And so every Chris Reeve knife I've ever held has been one that I own and one that arrives in the mail. So the first time I take it out of the box is the first time I've ever touched it. Um, so, um, and I'll talk about this. I, I, I don't want to waste too much time because apparently people get annoyed on YouTube if, if, uh, if you take too long to unbox things, but uh, I will note, I'm not a knife reviewer. I am a storyteller and I tell stories about my collections, things that I keep in my study. So if you're looking for a knife review that gets right to the point and gives you lots of data, um, you know, you, there's plenty of places that you can look, so don't send me nasty messages uh, or uh, things like that. Um, but the first thing I'll note about this when it arrived is I, I've received a lot of Chris Reeve knives in the mail. And the first thing I noticed was just how light just the box is. I mean, um, and I know this is a light knife, but um, uh, I'm, uh, uh, and, there's, and there's several things about this that I'm very curious to see. Um, so the honors for opening today are going to my um, Sabenza 25 with uh, black micarta inlay. Um, the reason is today is March 1st, 2020, um, but yesterday being February 29th, Leap Day, um, this uh, was this knife's, uh, four-year-old knife's first birthday because uh, it was made on February 29th, um, 2016. So thought I would do my package opening with it today. Um, but yeah, this is interesting. So. I, um, I'm very curious to see, uh, the, the birth date of this knife because it, uh, just appeared on the, um, oh, look at that, it's packed right tight in there. Uh, it appeared, okay, these are some, uh, lanyards that I ordered, um, um, for other knives and some just to scavenge the beads, um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to demolish the box, but it looks like I will. Uh, I don't wanna damage the inside. The, oh, and I just stabbed the Chris Reeve box inside. Um, but the reason being is that this is a basket weave Damascus blade. And um, as far as I know, they are out of production. Um, they're not offered on the Chris Reeve website in 2020. And I don't know I don't think they were offered in 2019, so I don't know 
when they stop production, I have been told that Devin Thomas, who was the uh, the steel maker, the Damascus maker, who makes the uh, basket weave, has stopped making um, his steels, although his website is still in existence. So, um, I don't know though. Uh, I know that Chris Reeve is not offering uh, it on the website. So are they still manufacturing some, uh, getting rid of old stock? Or is this knife, um, ah, look at this, I just the butcher. How did they get it in there? I guess it just barely fits, but because I'm filming and I have this camera above, I can't, uh, I could, I should have taken it out of that box, but I like to do my videos, uh, with the, um, taking the, the, the knife out of the postage box because, um, it proves that I've never held the knife before. And this is my first, uh, encounter. So that's the receipt, uh, for the tons of money I spent on this, but this, so, so here's the thing is, uh, this will be my third, uh, Damascus knife. Um, my first was a Chad Nichols raindrop, um, large Sabenza 21 with natural micarta. And I bought this for a specific, well, several reasons. Um, but, uh, that's what sort of made me fall in love with the Damascus. Is, um, and I wasn't planning on buying a Damascus at this point in my collection. Um, but then, uh, because I knew that the, um, basket weave was no longer, uh, being made, um, that I would probably never have one. And then I saw this, uh, knife, uh, at the dealer and it had been on their shelf for years. And, uh, so I snapped it up the, uh, small 21 CGG, uh, Celtic, um, with this gorgeous, um, basket weave. And I thought, well, great. This is my chance to own a basket weave. And then <clears throat> just a week after, uh, I purchased this one, up on the website comes new for February, um, the Menandi with uh, basket weave Damascus, and I'm very curious to see when this was made because it was new to the dealer. So is it Chris Reeve clearing out old stock, or uh, have they made some um, with uh, recently with um, some Damascus, uh, some basket weave Damascus that they've had uh, in their, st uh, stock room. So lo the, the birth card will tell, um, that's for sure. But, uh, a quick look around the internet again, today being March 1st, 2020, um, there are a few, uh, identical knives. I mean, obviously the wood, uh, the Makassar ebony will be differently different, look different on every knife, but there are a few basket weave Damascus out there. And I thought, well, I'm surprised they haven't been snapped up. So maybe they're, they're new coming from, uh, okay. Now this is definitely, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to hold off for a second on the birth card. Cause I'm going to just check. Okay. So like, this is a new sticker the new, okay. And uh, this is made in 2019, 2020. So they are obviously making some basket weaves, um, with for dealers um to clear out old basket weave steel that they have so let's see what the date is uh yeah january 27th 2020 so how about that it was made like just over a month ago i'm really surprised but the i think this card was a giveaway because this must be the new style well this is the new style of uh, information card that they're providing with the Chris Reeve knives. Um, the first time I saw this was with the 31. Uh, there's the Canada one, 31. Um, is the new exploded isometric view of the knife, um, similar to what's on the uh, takedown mat. Um, so that, as soon as I saw that, I thought, oh, well, this was made recently. So there you go. This is uh, some news. I think that, um, Chris Reeve is manufacturing, uh, basket weave blades or basket weave, uh, knives, um, in 2020. Um, and I suspect, uh, it's because they are getting rid of some old stock of the steel because, um, like I said, you can't, 
uh, request that on the website, unless they update the website soon, but obviously this was made over a month ago. Um, so I guess they don't have enough stock that they're gonna keep keep offering it, but I'm really glad to get that. So so I just unboxed this, uh, uh, um, the, the uh, six plus year old uh, Celtic um, that's been on the shelf at the dealer for six plus years. And uh, now I'm about to open a brand new uh, basket we made by Chris Reeve a month ago. Um, but that's exciting. I, I was really, really curious. And uh, so, yeah, the, the usual stuff in the box. Um, I, uh, that, well, I shouldn't say the usual because I've never opened a Manandi before, but um, it comes with the same uh, items as a small um, Sabenza 21, um, your um, fluorinated grease lube and your um, Allen key, as well as a... Um, uh, leather pocket sleeve um, as all the wood inlay CGG and unique graphic um, Sabenza 21s do um, so uh, and that's going to be um, that's going to be useful I think of all the knives that I own um, this one has the most likelihood of being carried in that, that pocket slip um and there's one thing I will mention later that I, I have a complaint about the Manandi before I even, uh, I've even held one. Um, but look at that Chris Reed burrito. Isn't it small and cute? Uh, is so used to opening up, um, Sabenza 21s, but let's see what's inside this burrito. I'm really excited. Uh, first time with a Manandi. Um, Here we go. Wow, look at that wood. This is why, this is, well, this and the basket we use is why I pulled the trigger because I wanted this Makassar Ebony, uh, which is, uh, got some color to it, some character. And they did have a photograph of this on the dealer's website, so, um, and I knew because I've seen a couple of other people in the Chris Reeve um, groups on online uh, with other Makassar ebony knives, um, like Sabenza 21s, uh, to be precise, um, with the Eb Makassar ebony inlays. And I saw that the ones coming out right now are have these sort of lighter streaks in them. So the batch of, of wood that they must be making their their inlays from right now um have that character and then i saw the photograph of this one on the dealer's website in, in a canadian dealer and they only had the one in stock and i i actually when i called up and asked i said is that uh the guy didn't tell me the birth date i said like keep that as a surprise but i said is the one with the photograph on your website the one the same one you have in stock and he went and checked the um the box and he said yeah it is so um and i'm very excited about that because my only other wood inlaid um uh chris reeve product or chris reeve knife in my collection was my very first chris reeve and that's this one my coco bolo inlaid small uh, sabenza 21 which i've had for um you know almost four years and uh it's um, the thing about Coco Bolo uh, is that it darkens the more you hold it and the, the more you, you carry it in your hand. And they also, um, the finish isn't as smooth as this, uh, but I, I wanted some wood with character. Um, so this has been the knife that I, has been sort of my gentleman's folder up until now. And I will still carry it to special events and, uh, um, things like that. Um, but this will be, this is timely, um, for a couple reasons, but I, I have an event, uh, where I'll be wearing tuxedo next weekend, uh, not a wedding, a uh, regimental ball. And, uh, this will be in my pocket for that. Um, but I had not intended in buying a Manandi for a couple of years, and I, I, I had a plan for what I wanted. And uh, then when I saw this with the Basket Weave Damascus and the, the nicely colored 
ebony, the Makassar ebony, I just had to go for it. Um, and uh, I mean, I've obviously seen photographs of this online, but I really like this milled clip. The only complaint I have about the Manandi is um, that they don't ship it with the clip replacement screw. So you can uh, purchase a screw that uh, replaces the clip because the clip is actually got a screw attached. It's got the threading on the clip piece that um, this sleeve goes over and, and holds this um, backspacer, uh, uh, the spacer um, in place. Um, so if you want to carry it in your pocket without the clip, um, there is a substitute screw. And I think it's a $3 US item. So why they don't include one is beyond me. Um, that's that's something that I think is an oversight. Um, but uh, I mean, I can't get over how light this is. I mean, it weighs 42 grams. Um, I mean, that's about the weight of a golf ball. Um, uh, and uh, not that I'm a golfer, but uh, um, 42 and a half grams or in uh, US uh, grams, it's uh, 1.5 ounces. Um, and I'm also going to be curious to see how it fits in the hand. So obviously, um, and uh, I'm, I apologize for the, how my hands look, but it's been a w long winter, dry winter. My hands are all dried out. But I, I know that I won't be able to open this one-handed. Um, that's what they tell me. Um, just because the nail nick uh, is the new style. Well, I'm not using one-handed, am I, when I do that? Yeah, there's no way... I'll have to play with it. Um, apparently, you can pinch open it. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, but uh, apparently, the old style nail, nail nick had a, a more um, perpendicular to the spine cut. Uh, so you could actually get one finger in there and, and open it. Um, I'm, you know, for the way I'm going to carry and use this knife, uh, I don't see any time where I'm going to have to quickly deploy it with one hand sort of thing. Um but there's that basket weave. I mean, isn't that something? Uh, that's gorgeous. Um, I'm so glad. I thought I, I bought the Celtic um, so I would have at least one example of the basket weave. And I mean, because the, the Sabenza blade is has um, a wider it's a wider blade, I get a bit of a repeat of the pattern. So I get a better look at the pattern. But how about that? Um, it appears to me, um, that the, that the Manandi is a bit darker. The, the pattern is a bit darker. Um, I don't know why that would be unless it's a different steel. They did have, uh, initially Devin Thomas, um, Damascus was made with a carbon steel as opposed to stainless. But I, I, for some reason, I think 2013, when the Celtic was made, it would be the stainless version. Um, I might have to do some more research about that. But, um, or it could be just the way that they are packaging and treating um, their Damascus blades right now because... Um, they do put Renaissance wax on these and that might make it look a little bit darker, but isn't that a stunning knife? I mean, um, I know I'm going to end up buying another with a plain blade and, um, maybe even a third one. Uh, I love that wood too. Well, let's just see. I mean, I, okay. I had my doubts as to whether it would be a four fingered knife in my hand, but it is, um, my hand it fits my hand and I have a fairly large hand. Uh, well, okay. If I lay it in like that, okay. It looks a little bit short on, on, uh, the side there, uh, by my baby finger. And, um, I'm going to have to see how my iron ring, um, works with the, the clip there in the palm, but, um, no, but I get all four fingers around it. Uh, and I like the jimping. Um, I, everybody knows that has watched my videos and why should I assume that I'm, I'm pretty new on YouTube and, and I'm, I'm not really looking for a huge audience. I'm just doing this so I can record my reactions to my new knives and my new coins and my new books and my new pens, etc. Um, 
and tell my stories. And uh, as someone that sent me an email says, jibber jabber. Um, but <laughs> uh, when I got my first Sabenza, the small 21 with the Coco Bolo inlays, this was the only thing I had to measure against. And um, the jimping is different than on all other, than on, on uh, say, a small with a, uh, with a, in single blade, um, the, the jimping is closer together. They're finer tooth. They grip your finger a bit more. And of course, my, my other um, knife I had up until recently, uh, my second knife was the 25, Sabenza 25, which has a totally different style of jimping. Um, so I was quite shocked when I got my my small 21 with the Insingo that it had a, a much grippier jimping and that the large 21s, um, whereas, uh, well, well, large 21, uh, like my... Um, Damascus or the large 31, which I am assuming has the same jimping as a large 21 um, plane, um, are all this grippier. In fact, even the, the Damascus is even grippier than the than the S35VN. Uh, um, so I find that this Menandi has very uh, grippy uh, jimping now I, I i'm gonna have to wait until i do get a s a, an s35 uh, vn uh, or s45 vn if if i don't get one until they start with the new steel um but just to compare but i i'm i like that that um that feeling um and the blade obviously uh quite small it's uh I think it's something like uh, six, almost just about seven centimeters, as opposed to the Sabenza, which is uh, seven and a half. So, yeah, it's about yeah, maybe maybe two thirds of a centimeter shorter. But still, you get a lot of blade for that handle. And I mean, the fact that there's nothing but space in that handle except for the the back spacer there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get used to going two-handed though, just so I'm so used to playing with my Sabenzas. Yeah, but oh, that's a smooth action, like really, like the the. Yeah, it just, I mean, with my, with my Sabenzas, there is just that double click is a lot stronger. Although I did notice with my other Damascus, um, now I haven't played with the Celtic much yet, but um, that this is the smoothest uh, knife I own, uh, the smoothest Sabenza I own. Um, the detent is not, um, is is very, very uh, slight, um, as even compared to say, this one that's been used for three and a half years, that's been work broken in quite a bit. I mean, this has a softer detent, uh, but it's still much uh, more, it takes much more pressure than than this one did out of the box. This, uh, and maybe that's a characteristic of the Damascus knives. That seems to be my experience so far. I mean, let's try the Celtic. I haven't really... You know, this, the Celtic has a, a tougher detent. Uh, similar to um, my Insingo, maybe. No, it's even tougher than the Insingo uh, on the Celtic. Uh, but then again, this is a uh, this knife was made six uh, over six years ago. Um, but this is very soft. Like I mean, I barely feel a detent when I when I first start to open it, and I can feel the. I can feel the Damascus as the detent ball goes over the tang of the blade. There's there's a certain roughness to it, and I'm assuming it's not lack of uh, lubrication. It's it's the actual uh, layers of the Damascus that I'm feeling. Um, yeah, quite uh, quite impressed. I'm quite pleased with this. I can't wait to carry it with me next weekend. Uh, to the regimental ball um well there you have it so uh, a couple of weeks ago i thought i would never own a, a basket weave damascus um blade and all of a sudden um 
I have two, uh, but the biggest surprise is the fact that they're making um, basket weave uh, Damascus in 2020. And I, I keep holding it on the angle because I'm not sure what the lighting is like. Um, I can't see well up in the camera. Like I can stretch my neck and look up at the top of my phone and, and have a look. But um, I keep holding it that way because from where I'm sitting, I see the Damascus a little bit better. Um, but I hope you can, you all get a look at that uh, pattern. Uh, those of you that are looking in, um, that, that you see it with the light on it, because it, it is a, a really, I think of the two, well, of the two Damascus, um, uh, types I own, the basket weave and the raindrop, uh, the basket weave is, is definitely my favorite. Um, I don't even know if I want a ladder Damascus. I like the boomerang, the new one. Um, that's why I was hope I well. That's why I was thinking I would wait a few years for uh, Manandi because um, I, I'm sure they're certain to offer it in the boomerang. Um, although maybe the blades just not thick enough or wide enough. I don't know what you call it. That's the thickness. Um, I guess that's the width, and that's yeah. So the, it's I don't know if it's wide enough to show the boomerang well or. The, uh, or how they would cut the boomerang to get it to, I mean, I think you would have real luck of the draw if you get, because you, you really want the boomerang to sort of go down the center of your blade and line up with the tip if it, uh, for the best look, at least from the photographs I've seen of it. So yeah, my plan was not to get a Manandi until, um, until they had boomerang and here I ended up getting, uh, the basket weave, which, you know, very, very pleased. Um, and boy, I mean, just impressed with how smooth this knife is. Even, I mean, like I said, the, the actual, the, the feeling when you're shutting it and opening it, there, there's, there's a certain tactile, I don't want to call it gritty. It's just, you can feel there's a little, uh, like a little roughness or something, um, like I can't feel individual lines of of the layers, but there's just something about it. It's not smooth steel going by, um, but the actual amount of pressure it takes to operate it is is next to nothing. It's and the the lock engaging and the detent engaging in the open and closed positions. It's just such a soft, elegant feel. I mean. We say gentleman's folder. They're not kidding. Um, really, I mean, it's quite obvious that you, that it's quite obvious that I'm a real fan of of Chris Reeve. Um, uh, so I tend to get overly enthusiastic, um, but I am impressed and I'm I'm excited. Um, look at that blade centering too, lovely. Um, so, um, for those of you that stuck with it, um, I hope you enjoyed this and, um, I'll see you the next time I do one of these. So long for now. Hey there. Welcome back to my study. Um, I'm tacking this on to the end of another video, most likely. Um, for those of you that, uh, are Chris Reeve aficionados, um, you know that Fox Hanks made the Chris Reeve um, collaboration Hank uh, handkerchief. Um, and I've ordered uh, another. And I just thought, since I just had some arrive and I was filming um, the video for the arrival of my first Manandi, um, that I would, um, I would show you guys uh, and gals um, what uh, Fox Hanks, uh, arrive like, uh, so might as well use my new Manandi, um, to open the package, um, and just show you what an elegant job, um, that Fox Hanks does. Um, they, um, it's a, it's a couple in, uh, Texas who do everything. They manufacture the handkerchiefs, they run their website, they, uh, they send everything out to the customers. Um, so, um, but they do a really excellent job. And <laughs> now I'm destroying the, the envelope, which I didn't mean to do. Um, okay. But yeah, here we go. Uh, 
Oh, they included some candies. I didn't know that they, they, I better check my last one. I don't think I, I got any candies with the last one. <laughs> uh, homemade toffee. How about that? Um, but here is uh, how it comes. They wrap it in uh, paper uh, uh, with their stamp on it and they put your initials on it, uh, or my initials in this case, uh, and tie it up with twine. It's quite a nice little way of packaging things. Um, so uh, I'll dig in here to see. Uh, I mean, it's pretty simple. I just thought you'd like to see it. And there's this great, great smell. Um, and I think it's cedar. I actually asked them in an email, but they didn't respond. Um, yeah, so here's the two Hanks that I ordered. Um, and they name all their color patterns. And just like Chris Reeve knives, they all come with a little birth card. So this one is silver ash. And, uh, um, yeah, it basically describes uh, how many that they made, uh, or uh, one of 12, and that it was made on the 23rd of uh, January 2020. Um, and of course, their business information on the back, if if any of you are looking, is foxhanks.com. And then this one is uh, sort of a nice greeny turquoise uh, color, and uh, it's called the Glacier. Uh, teal blue with black. Yeah. Also made on the 23rd of January. Um, but, um, yeah, so, and they smell great. I just, I gotta find out if that's cedar. Um, but, um, and I, I, I started to carry one of these every day and I thought, well, I want a couple and I, I, I seem to gravitate towards these little square patterns, but, um, so, um, they're a bit expensive, but um, high quality, two ply. I mean, the backs are, are always a different color, um, stitched together, um, uh, sort of with these tack stitches and stitched diagonally. Um, but uh, if you're if you liked the Chris Reeve one and you want a similar one, um, I highly recommend them. Um, and they're nice, obviously nice people that put uh, a lot of care into their work. So um, for those of you that were interested, uh, I hope that was informative or kind of neat to see. Uh, and I hope uh, to see you next time. So long for now.